The term thistles doesn't actually refer to a single plant. Instead, it refers to a group of plants in the Asteraceae family. The main thing that they have in common is the fact that they've got prickles to try to stop herbivores from eating them. Three specific groups, the Carduus, Circium and Onopodum, are usually the plants people mean when they say thistles. And yes, it does get confusing very quickly. But because we're focusing on folklore, we look at what the law says rather than getting bogged down in botanical differences. But this episode isn't intended to help you identify plants, just to understand how people once thought of them. And in fact, in the Nettles post, I mentioned the 1959 Weeds Act, in which Parliament required landowners to prevent the spread of dock leaves. Turns out, the Act also applies to both spear and creeping thistle. And also ragwort, but that's beyond this episode. So that makes thistles a great addition to this Folklore of Unwanted Plants series. So let's find out how thistles can banish evil, drive away gloomy thoughts and protect your home in this week's episode of Fabulous Folklore. Hello there and welcome to Fabulous Folklore, the podcast for all things folklore, occult and just a bit weird. I'm your host Icy Sedgwick, blogger, fantasy author and your guide into these rather mysterious realms. I've got some rare things to show you, so come on in, take a look around, but be careful not to touch anything these things sometimes bite. Well, hello there and welcome back to Fabulous Folklore with me, your host, Icy Sedgwick. We are wrapping up the Folklore of Unwanted Plants Month this week with thistles. And one of the problems I've got with thistles is it always makes me think of that like 1980s kids cartoon, The Family Nest where these two children, Angus and Elspeth, used to blow these thistle whistles in order to call the different members of the family nest. So it was obviously set on Loch Ness, which you've probably figured out by the title. And you had like her high ness and grumpy ness and sporty ness and they would have adventures and stuff. But every time I hear thistles, that's all I end up thinking of. So hopefully that was a nice little blast from the past for you as well. But we are just going to jump into thistles. And it does seem perhaps a little bit obvious that thistles would fall under the heading of protective, so we are going to look at them in their protective aspect. 17th century astrologer William Lilly asserted that all manner of thistles fell under Mars's rulership. Now this made sense because obviously for a prickly plant that likes to protect itself, falling under Mars who kind of rules all things sharp and pointy, I mean it makes sense. But it also meant that the plants were good at defending the self because after all they developed prickles to stop animals from eating them. And indeed, one legend sees thistles help to protect Scotland and thus become the national flower. Now, according to one version of the legend, Danish invaders at Stirling Castle stepped on thistles around the perimeter, alerting the defenders with their howls of pain. And obviously it meant that the defenders could then essentially hammer the invaders and win the battle. Another version of the story sees a Norse army land in Scotland in the 13th century. Now, they planned to ambush the Scots and they removed their shoes so as to be stealthy in their approach. One of the invaders stood on a thistle in the dark and his cry alerted the Scots. The ambush fell apart and the Scots thrashed the invaders and again the thistle became the national flower in recognition of the role it had played in thwarting the ambush. Now growing common thistle in the garden could ward off thieves while carrying it would protect you from evil and it is likely that planting a thistle beneath your windows would at least make it harder to try and climb in there but obviously carrying it would then allow you to spiritually make use of its prickles even if you weren't sort of going around like I don't know hitting people with it which I suppose that would protect you from a lot of things but probably leave you with very few people to talk to. Now, we're going to go from one extreme to the other here because there wasn't really any way to do a cool segue, but we're going to go from protective thistles to holy thistles. And the milk thistle also has a quite interesting legend to explain its name. Now, according to the tale, the Virgin Mary encountered a cow and being thirsty, she fashioned the leaf of a thistle into a cup and then milked the cow so that she could obviously drink the milk properly. And having drunk her milk, Mary ordained that the plant would be forever marked in remembrance for its help. And this particular story aims to explain the milky white veins on the plant's leaves. And it also explains why Sillybum marianum is sometimes called Our Lady's Milk Thistle. Now an alternative version of this legend sees some of Mary's milk landing on a thistle when she's finished feeding Jesus. And this also explains why its leaves bear white spots. And you do get quite a few of these sort of stories in flower folklore where some kind of legend tries to explain a natural feature of the plant. And it's quite instructive to folklorists to sort of see which figures are associated with which plants. But I do think that that's quite a, quite an interesting story that the different versions all end up relying on milk, hence the name. Now, somewhat unsurprisingly, 
herbalists wrote about the healing properties of thistles. And I don't know about you, but it does seem quite interesting how we've got all these really prolific plants that a lot of gardeners call weeds because they just grow in the wrong place. But they also have medicinal qualities that are actually really useful. And in the early 1900s, Maud Grieve asserted that the leaves and stalks of some thistles are actually edible, which explained why some farmers might add the ground up stalks to their animal feed. And even now, goldfinches apparently enjoy eating the seeds of thistles. Now, holy thistle and milk thistle were believed to be able to cure the plague. I'm not quite sure how, that's just what it says in her herbal. But many varieties of thistle also work as an emetic or diuretic, meaning that they make you vomit or they make you pee. And at one point, people believed that the holy thistle could actually suppress fevers. Now, Culpepper, like Lily, noted holy thistle rulership by Mars, and he concluded that it could therefore cure any bites by venomous animals, boils or plague sores, because all of these fell under Mars. And this works on the basis of sympathy, much like the Doctrine of Signatures, which I've covered before, but just briefly. In the Doctrine, the part of a plant shaped like a body part was believed to cure that body part. And you have a similar idea behind sympathy, so a plant ruled by Mars could then cure ailments also ruled by Mars. Now Charlemagne also had cause to praise this thistle, and disease had broken out in his camp, so he prayed for guidance. An angel appeared to him and counselled him to shoot an arrow into the air. Whichever plant it landed on would cure the disease. Charlemagne did as instructed, and his arrow struck the carline thistle, or carline of Algaris, and apparently they used it to cure the men. Now I did look this up and interestingly different members of the Carlina family appear as herbal remedies in European herbalism. Now some of these remedies aim to treat skin lesions, rashes and toothache but it also had uses for gastrointestinal issues so we can only guess at whatever the disease was that was actually plaguing Charlemagne's camp but it does lead you to think was it some kind of skin sore based illness or was it indeed something of the gastrointestinal variety. Now also Pliny, because you know it wouldn't be an episode without Pliny, asserted that you could make a decoction of thistle, apply it to a bald head and then thus restore the hair. Ah Pliny. Yet thistles are fascinating in that they also offer relief from mental distress, not just physical ailments. And that isn't really something that we've necessarily seen a lot among some of the other plants that I've covered. Now, wearing or carrying a thistle flower was believed to drive off feelings of melancholy, which I find quite interesting, considering that was also believed to drive away evil as well. So it's quite interesting that it seems to work on the thoughts as well. And keeping a vase of the flowers would boost the vitality of anyone in the same room as them. Now, I think that we possibly have to look at the plant's rulership by Mars there, since Mars is all about vitality and drive. So it would then make sense that if you kept a plant associated with vitality in the room, it would therefore have that effect on the people in the same room. Christina Oakley Harrington suggests a Mediterranean charm from late antiquity that involves making a thistle amulet to ease feelings of dread. And to do this, you should pluck a Scots thistle while the moon is in Capricorn in August or September. Now, I looked that up and in the UK, that's between the 26th and 28th of August and 22nd and 25th of September in 2023. If you're listening to that in a future year, then you can obviously look that up online. Now, you should be sure to ask the thistle for its permission to cut the flower and then you can wear or carry the thistle to bring peace of mind, assuming that it's actually agreed. And if you put it in a small box, that would make it easier to carry. Now, I found that one quite interesting that you had to do it while the moon was in Capricorn because Capricorn's ruled by Saturn, not Mars, but Mars is exalted in Capricorn. So it all kind of comes back round eventually. Now, Harrington specifies the Scots thistle for this particular amulet, naming the Onopodum acanthium as such. Now, Roy Vickery points out that no one is actually entirely sure which species of thistle is the so-called Scots thistle, and notes that while many people suggest the cotton thistle, which is the Onopodum acanthium, there is still some debate about the identity of the thistle. And there's also an argument that the native spear thistle, Circium vulgari, is actually the Scots thistle, because the cotton thistle is non-native, only arriving sometime around the 16th century. So either way, thistles are very strongly associated with Scotland and the flowers first appeared on Scottish coins as far back as 1474 and King James VII founded the Order of the Thistle in 1687 with the thistle as its heraldic emblem. So it is quite interesting how many people do sort of just confidently assert that the Onopodum acanthium is the Scots thistle, but ultimately nobody really knows. But as always, there are additional uses for plants in folklore, and according to Essex law, the largest thistle in a patch is called the Devil's Thistle, and local wizards would use their stalks as walking sticks. One assumes they dried them out first. 
And also, I'm guessing you probably took the prickles off as well. Like, that would be quite hardcore if you didn't. Meanwhile, girls could use thistles to find which of her boys loved her best, because, again, it wouldn't be an episode of Fabulous Folklore without a love divination. Now, in this one, this was basically used by girls who had lots of potential suitors, and they would cut as many thistle heads as they had suitors. They would have to cut off the points and everything like that first, and then she would name each head for each suitor, and then put them all under her pillow. It does specify in the four card book from 1884 that you would do this with three or four, but I suppose there's nothing stopping you doing it with more, depending on how popular you are. Then she'd look under her pillow the following morning, and the thistle head belonging to the suitor that loved her best would have put out a fresh sprout by morning. During the harvest in Suffolk, farmers would shout, look out Jacobites, if there were thistles among the sheaves of wheat. And Margaret Baker also notes that in Germany, France and Spain, people once nailed the carline thistle to their door. If the flower closed, rain was on the way. And this aligns the thistle with other types of weather-predicting flowers like the dandelion, which obviously I did a couple of weeks ago. Dreaming of thistles, especially being surrounded by them, was good luck, and it meant that you'd receive some good news shortly. And the other one I wanted to include is the fact that there's a theory that the name Carduus, which is one of the thistle genus, came from the process of carding wool, and the heads of some thistles would have been helpful for this technique. So if you've never seen wool carding before, it's basically where you take the raw fleece that you've sort of cleaned and whatnot, and then you're using something spiky, like nowadays people use sort of carding brushes and things like that, but you would obviously, you, you could do this with thistle heads if, you know, you had the time. And you essentially comb the raw wool to align the fibres and then refine it ready for spinning. And you could also use teasels for this as well, so you can kind of see how people would have used that. And whether that is where the name came from, I don't know, but it is quite a persuasive argument. And finally, the Victorian language of flowers. Thistles do appear in there. And according to Mrs. Burke's Language of Flowers Dictionary, the common thistle meant austerity, the fuller's thistle meant misanthropy, and the Scots thistle meant retaliation. Now, I should point out that the fuller's thistle is actually a teasel, so it is a completely different plant, but it does make it a lot easier to actually specify which one you want. If you can go, hang on, that's a teasel, that's clearly not a thistle. Although, obviously, because we don't know what the common thistle is, because there's lots of common thistle types, and also we don't know what the Scots thistle is, it is entirely possible that you might have sent someone a message meaning austerity and they thought that you were actually retaliating. But again, this is one of the problems with the language of flowers. So ultimately, what do we actually make of the folklore of thistles? Well, I think that the protective aspects of the plant make a lot of sense because it's a prickly plant. So it sort of is a bit of a given. But I do find it quite interesting, this idea that it also helped to drive away gloomy thoughts and melancholy as well and then boost vitality. And indeed, it may well be that it had this ability to drive away melancholy because of its association with Mars and all of his kind of verve and drive and all that kind of thing that you get with anything to do with Mars. So it is quite interesting how some of the flowers properties seem to come very much from astrology and the things that astrologers have written about it and then you've also got these other aspects as well it is as i say considered an invasive weed and it can take over different areas very very quickly so i wouldn't recommend planting any of your own and yes it does help pollinators and it does help wildlife but there are some arguments for essentially not letting it take hold because it can be quite prolific so bear that in mind so I hope that you enjoyed this week's episode on thistles. It was certainly a little bit of a grab bag compared to previous ones, but I think it is quite interesting seeing the range of folklore that can be attached to particular plants. As always, if you do want to learn herbalism, then I would say do it from the best. And if you check out Ronan Sage, I've linked to the Herbaria membership below where there's a whole manner of resources and you get a monograph on a plant every month and really supportive community and everything as well. So I've put the link for joining them if you are keen on learning herbalism. And to be honest, it's quite daunting because you don't want to accidentally poison yourself or anyone else for that matter. But it's also the fact that it's quite nice to learn from people who actually know how to use these things properly, but also how to grow them so you get the most out of them as well. So I highly recommend the Herberry membership. I myself am a member, hence the reason why I'm recommending it. So that is the end of our folklore of Unwanted Plants Month. There were a couple of other requests that I had for things like Ground Elder, but I couldn't really find enough folklore on them to justify an entire episode. So who knows, I may end up doing like a compilation or something at some point in the future. I haven't decided what I'm going to do for the theme in May yet. So obviously, if you want to, you can always 
drop me a request or tweet me or message me on Mastodon or Instagram or wherever the cool kids are these days. I mean, I'm not going to be there because I'm not cool. But feel free to let me know what you'd like to hear or otherwise just come back next week and get a surprise because it'll probably end up being a surprise to me as well. But there we go. Anyway, it's been lovely chatting with you as always. And I do love that when people message me on like Twitter or Instagram or whatever and either tell me about the plant or just indeed the folklore topic that we've talked about. And then I get to hear like how folklore pays in your life as well. It's always quite nice to hear how uh, how these things work out in real life, as it were. So do feel free to keep contacting me and having a bit of a chat. And I will see you next week when we do whatever the next episode is going to be. Cheerio. Well, thanks for listening and I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, feel free to leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts because that helps other people find the show too. It also takes between four and six hours to research, write, record and edit these episodes. So if you want to help support my time in doing that, then you can buy me a coffee or you can join the Fabulous Folklore family on Patreon and enjoy extra benefits, including exclusive episodes and articles and even illustrated talks. All the links you need are below and thanks in advance.